Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 119 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like yourself to learn everything about knives and knife collecting and get to go into the weeds a little bit and talk a little bit more about knives than we than we get to on the Sunday interview show. We try to leave the uh, Sunday podcast strictly for the interview to uh, to highlight the guest. And this past week, we had a great guest. Andrew Demko was with, was with us on episode number 118. Just, Bob, uh, just 100 episodes or just one episode or two episodes shy of 100. Yeah. I'm not good at math, as you can tell. <laughs> Me neither. So we won't bring that up. But, but a lot of episodes ago, he was one of the first uh, big interviews we had on this show, yeah. uh, uh, Big Knife Makers. And uh, it was right when Cold Steel had come out with high fidelity uh, production versions of his custom 8010 and 8015. Well, now he has a new lock out on a new knife called the AD20, and the lock is called the Shark Lock, and it's an innovative uh, sort of take on his RAM safe lock, and has little shades of of the uh, Scorpion Lock and the Triad Lock to them. So, I mean, you can see the mind of Andrew Demko at work in this in this cool thing, and it was great to have him on and talk to him about the process of coming up with it, that kind of thing. And if you missed that, that was the knifejunkie.com slash 118, the knifejunkie.com slash 118. Might have to start calling him uh, by his new nickname, Locke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's come up with so many. He is, man. He's the master. All right. Huh, master, Master Locke. Ah, ah, ah. Or Locke Master. Oh, there you go. Hey, a good show today, though. A lot of good stuff we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to do a pocket check, something we uh, have been remiss in doing uh, on great. the podcast, but uh, we try to do on Thursday Night Knives, which is uh, every Thursday night at 10 p.m. on the Bob's uh, YouTube channel, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Uh, also going to have, of course, our Knife Life News segment, where we're going to have some stuff with Monterey Bay Knives Summit Knife Company. And uh, Benchmade back in the news that we're going to talk about. And then uh, Bob's State of the Collection, Collector's Remorse. I'm looking forward to hearing what that is about. And uh, then the CRKT Pete or Piat, however you like to pronounce it. I like to pronounce it Piet because it oh, makes Piet. me feel well, fancy. Another third way. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's the Pete. Well, P-I-E-T. It doesn't look like Pete to me, but hey. Yeah. Who, to, who am I? A special little CRKT we're going to talk about. Yeah. So a lot of stuff. Uh, Bob, where do you want to where do you want to start off the show with? Well, I, I uh, until it's done, I have to plug the ultimate steel because uh, Knife Rights does so much for us. Uh, headed up by Doug Ritter. Uh, so I have to say, uh, if you can if you can give right now, uh, donate whatever you can to the ultimate steel. Uh, it's their annual fundraising promo over at Knife Light Knife Rights. And, uh, you know. Help them help us. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got to get that in. KnifeRights.org or just a favorite search engine. If you'll do Ultimate Steel 2020, uh, all that will pop up and uh, different levels of donating. You can pick and choose how much you want to give. And again, to uh, to support our right to carry knives. That's right. And they have awesome thank you gifts. I got a SOG Terminus and there are Wii knives and Cold Steel knives and then other custom knives at higher uh, giving levels uh, that you stand to win. So, Speaking of uh, carrying knives, that's a great transition into the uh, pocket check. What do you want to uh, talk about in your pocket today, Bob? Well, today I'm, I'm carrying the Spyderco Military. It's a big knife. It's the only, it's one of two tip down knives uh, that I, that I totally excuse its tip down nature for, even though if I had my druthers, I'd, I'd flip it around. Uh, but it's just a great, big, beautiful Spyderco, and uh, I never carry it. And today I just randomly opened up the drawer and just picked it up, and I, I felt compelled to pick it up. And and uh, having it in my hand, I decided to carry it. So I thought I'd mention it here. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to dig something out. There was a reason why I got this in the first place. Uh, and to reconnect with it in that way, that sounds so corny, but you know what I mean. Uh, and, and to remember why I still keep it and why I haven't gotten rid of it. 
And that reason is, do you want to share? Well, uh, first of all, it's big and it's got a great size. It's it's like a plus <laughs> enough reason there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's a plus four inch blade. It feels incredible in the hand. It's S thirty V, which is steel, which is a steel I love uh, very much. And then uh, a sentimental reason: uh, my brother and father just totally coincidentally have the same knife. We never got together and talked about it. And you know, my my brother is a bit of a knife collector, but my dad isn't. So the fact that we all have this to me means there's something to it. Yeah. Another thing, I sold it to my good friend Ian Lewis for a while and bought it back from him. Uh, Ian is a martial arts instructor uh, extraordinaire, uh, and I owe him a call. Uh, but uh, he had this for a while. It was uh, too fancy for how he wanted to carry, and I think the tip down bummed him out. Mm. I bought it back from him. So it's it's been around the block, and it, it has some meaning to me, and it happens to be a fantastic knife. Well, you never know when you uh, have uh, knives that you sell and you get rid of. You never know. They may be coming back in your life. And and maybe that plays into something we're going to talk about toward the end of the show. I'll have to wait and find out when we talk about collectors or Morse. But, uh, hey, you want to do a, a quick promo for uh, the Knife Junkie Town Hall coming up? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So uh, on June 20th, Saturday, June 20th, at noon Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have a scaled down version of the mega inaugural town hall we had on April 18th. But only scaled down in, in hours. It's not, exactly. not by guest or, or quality or anything like that. No, 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 no. By scaled down, I mean we are going to have fewer guests. On that first one, as you recall, we had 17 guests and four co-hosts or three co-hosts. So it was a, it, it was a lot of people. And uh, I realized... Maybe so that everyone's voice can be heard. It makes more sense to have fewer people uh, on for a little bit longer so that more people in depth. Can, yeah, can go in, in, in depth. And we have four really awesome knife makers uh, who I just I just need one more email of commitment from from them to just be absolutely sure that I can consider them booked. But uh, uh, as you saw in the last one, we had some really, really uh, we had Greg Medford and Bob Terzawola, the likes of these kind of. Knife makers, you'll you'll have a chance to talk to. You'll have a chance to come on the show uh, if if it's right, and also to comment. And uh, right. so, great opportunity to meet some heroes. Well, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, let the cat out of the bag on all the guests tomorrow. If you're listening to this podcast when it drops on uh, Wednesday, June tenth, uh, the Thursday Night Knives uh, live show on YouTube will be tomorrow night. Uh, if you're listening after the Wednesday drop, obviously you can figure out the dates, but uh, hopefully on uh, Thursday, June 11th, Thursday Night Knives, we'll be able, able to announce the uh, star-studded lineup of guests for the uh, Knife Junkie Town Hall on June 20th. So look yep. forward to that. Yeah. So think of these town halls as your chance to talk to your knife heroes. More details about that coming up, how you can join in the conversation, be part of the fun all Coming up here on the Knife Junkie Podcast and on Thursday Night Knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Monterey Bay Knives, uh, you may know them. It's Ray Laconico and Sanford Owen, two uh, famed uh, custom knife makers. They got together uh, to make these small batch sort of uh, semi-production in-house knives, Monterey Bay Knives. And uh, they have just come out with their first in-house production design. And uh, it looks like this is a trend they want to continue into the future. And man, with Ray Laconico and Sanford Owen, the knives are just beautiful. I, I have a real uh, eye for Ray Laconico, especially that new, uh, that new artisan that came out uh, recently, uh, the Centauri. But in any case, this new one, this new design from them is called the Old Guard. And I think that's a great name, the Old Guard for their first in-house uh, production uh, knife here. And I like the name Old Guard because it's sort of referring to the fact that it's a thumb stud knife. It is a um, phosphor. It runs on phosphor bronze washers. It has a very neutral handle with just a, t uh, a very slight scalloping for uh, for uh, a finger choil and an access to that uh, to that titanium frame lock. It's got a very very classically Ray Laconico looking blade to me. Uh, beautiful simple drop point, fully flat ground, and uh, you know you can get uh, different handle materials on the show side, uh, carbon fiber and 
micarta. Three and a half inch blade. It, it's just M390 steel. It's going to be a huge, huge hit. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, oh, kind of, what's that new knife? Um, I don't know. <laughs> ah, the quiet, the new quiet carry knife that a lot of people uh. are, are, are really liking. Uh, it's simple. It looks like just kind of back to the simple, useful, sturdy, stout tool knife. Kind mm. of like, uh, kind of like Sabenza style. Well, it was interesting. Uh, you know, this first story, Monterey Bay Knives, and our next story, Summit Knife Company. I was looking at, at the show notes, and you know, as we were preparing and getting ready, I was like, I don't think I've I've heard of those before. But as soon as you said Ray Laconico, I was like, yeah. I've heard that name. Yeah. So, so my knife newbiness, you know, here is, <laughs> is kind of playing playing in. I, I I have heard of him, know of him. I just didn't put the Monterey Bay knives part of it together. Well, yeah, it's it's interesting because I say it's their first in-house design, though Laconico's, a lot of his designs, or a number of his designs, I think was it three, have come out through Monterey Bay knives already, but those were mm. formerly custom knives that they uh, interpreted. This is one that they designed together to be produced by their company gotcha. uh, from the start. And they've also worked with uh, Jerry McGinnis, whose knives are just so gorgeous, and Peter Carey, uh, ditto, also very amazing knife makers. Mm. Uh, but so, so this one should be really cool to see. I'm, I'm interested uh, interested to see what the reaction is. This right. seems like the kind of knife that uh, that n- the knife world will just kind of go nuts for. Only on the Knife Junkie podcast is it a good thing to name drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right, Summit Knife Company. Is there a connection here that I need to be aware of, need to learn? Uh, well, uh, Summit Knife Company, uh, the other night we were talking about Tommaso Rumici. That's all right. He's <laughs> the Italian designer, obviously Italian designer, that uh, created Summit Knife Company's first knife, the, uh, what was it called? The Half Dome. Beautiful mm. little, very unique looking knife in micarta or i think it also came in a uh, titanium uh, but uh, just beautiful little useful edc very small though uh, kind of a funky looking handle it either looks super comfortable or super super uncomfortable well this summit knife company has now come out with a second sort of big brother called the el capitan it doesn't really look much uh, like the half dome at all except uh, in materials you know you have the beautiful micarta handle uh you have the uh either m390 or d2 depending on the model you get in the blade steel uh but the difference is here this is a big knife it's a four inch blade or 3.94 if you're if you're being stopped by the cops you got a really big ergonomic sort of neutral handle that reminds me a bit of like uh kind of an se almost uh but it's a folder and just <laughs> really, really up my alley. Uh, if I had to pick one, I would get an M390 with the uh, with the micarta. But uh, just beautiful. Uh, it's made by Fox in Maniago. And, uh, you know, you can get G10 micarta or bronze. Bronze. I said carbon fiber before. I'm sorry. Bronze. Now, how cool is that? A bronze knife. Interesting. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Bring you right back to the Bronze Age. Right. Uh, no, nothing else. It's just right. cool. And I'm happy to see Summit Knife Company come out with a with a second knife because that first one made a little bit of a splash. And this one is just looks so cool and usable to me. Nothing else other than you might want to buy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? If I were an outdoorsman, I would get this because uh, it has a very broad blade. It's not fully flat ground, but... Uh, it's a very high flat ground grind and a very broad blade. And to me, it just looks like it would be excellent for, for outdoor use. All right. Moving on, it feels like a few weeks since we've uh, talked about Benchmade, the yep. knife uh, or tool that you want to uh, uh, bring back onto the podcast that you want to talk about Benchmade. Yeah, when when we talked about the new 2020 releases for Benchmade back in January, uh, one of the ones that really stood out to me was the Jared Oser uh, Tengu. Jared Oser is a, a, a custom knife maker uh, who makes these unbelievably beautiful slip joints. And uh, he is actually, he's a, he's a home builder in, in, his, uh, in his day-to-day life. And this is something that he does on the side, which to me is amazing. <laughs> really? I yeah. Can't, I can't build anything or God, make man, anything. That, yeah. I mean, to me, it's just bandwidth. Uh, you know, like, wow, how can you get really good at this and, and do something else at the same time? I don't right. Know. 
Yeah, I'll uh, go build a house, and then I'll make a knife, and then yeah. maybe I'll uh, you know put drive home in the car I built on the side or something. <laughs> you know? Exactly, and then put it on a rocket and send it to Mars. Yeah. So, uh, so the Jared Oser Tengu uh, came out from Benchmade. It's a flipper. Uh, it's a uh, Tanto blade flipper, but it really has. It's it's spoken in the language of slip joint. It's got a beautiful sort of uh, uh, squared off neutral sort of handle with a with a shield in the handle and uh so they came out with a companion piece uh jared oster did and it's called the tengu tool a bench made also and it is a tiny little little cool pocket tool when it's folded up uh the tang uh protrudes from the handle and you have a, a, a like a pry bar slash a screwdriver slash cap lifter and then you roll your roll it with your thumb or your finger like you would a front flipper, and uh, and then out comes this little one point one four inch, presumably a chisel ground tanto blade, and it's just a cool little classy. It's kind of like something James Bond would pull out if he had to like pry something open uh, at a black tie event. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful little looking tool. And you know me, I'm not huge on the on the pocket tools. Uh, but this one has a blade on it, so it's also a knife. Right. Uh, but just like its big brother, it's CPM 20 CV steel, which we all know is pretty darn awesome. And uh, the beautiful handle is is a contoured black G10. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, looks really cool. Had you at looks, but probably not going to buy because your other key word there that you said was little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, this is audaciously little, and I do like that, like the oh, like the okay. tiny little uh, uh, launch ten or nine, whatever it is. That both of them actually, they're both mm-hmm. tiny. Mm-hmm. So when it's like really, really small, and I can drop it at the bottom of the pocket, that I, I also like. All right, so really, really small or large knives. You just don't <laughs> yeah. like those middle of the road ones, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> All right, good to know where you stand. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. Well, speaking of standing, uh, that means collecting and what you like to collect. And so we're going to dive into a little bit of Bob's state of the collection here for just a moment and uh, talk about one knife in particular that uh, came from Women Carry Knives, but then also get to the topic that is just burning a hole in my pocket that I want to learn about is collector's remorse. But uh, we we mentioned there's two or three different ways to say this uh, knife from CRKT, but I think you have convinced me to just say Pete. So yeah. CRKT Pete. I'm going to call it the Pete. All right. Uh, so this is a great little EDC. It's a it's a um, the reason I'm talking about it is it came out I think 2020. I think it's new for 2020. And in all the videos I saw, I just God, I love it. It's this little Jesper Voxnes or Jesper Voxnes designed knife. Uh, you know, it's. It's uh, eight CR thirteen MOV. It's it's glass reinforced nylon, but man, it is beautifully done. And so, uh, 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 women carry knives did a great review of this, and I just commented saying I, I love this thing, and uh, and she sent it to me, which I thought was so very very cool. And so, uh, uh, by the way, I have a, a little CRKT I'm sending back. I want to I want to see what her thoughts are on that. So this knife is. Uh, I would highly recommend it for anyone who wants to spend only 30 bucks, but get really great design. And and I'm not here to sell this knife, but in having it for a couple of days and looking at it, I I have to say I'm incredibly impressed uh, at some of the little design details. Uh, Chief among them is this deep carry pocket clip. I know that that's not the most exciting part, but when you turn it on the side and you look at it, It is so beautifully nestled in the handle and the screws that they use to fix it to the handle are so beautifully flat that there is no interruption when you put this in your pocket. Now, recently, uh, I reviewed the uh, new SOG branded knives and my one complaint uh, with their pocket clips, which which are excellent, is that uh, on the Aegis, the screws stick up too much. And uh, so when you... Stick it in your pocket. It, it takes some doing to get over the fatness of your seam. Right. And then when you pull it out, it's the same issue. And and also, not for nothing, it'll wear that seam out really quickly. Right. So on this small, little, uh, kind of cheap material, high design knife, they actually took the time to to make a little pocket in both sides of the FRN so you can switch it, switch the clip orientation. 
And, and they chose the perfect screws and or made the perfect screws and, and set it up and, and took so much care with that. And I think that is how it should be done. CRKT, you know, I love them for their design. They always have amazing designs out there. Hmm. Um, you know, like others, I might scoff at the materials sometimes, but really that's kind of splitting hairs. You said uh, FRN. Remind me what that is again. Is it fiberglass reinforced? Nylon. Nylon, yes. Yeah. Fiber reinforced. Okay. Fiberglass reinforced nylon. Okay. I like and, the look of it. And I like the little splash of blue. Blue is my favorite color. So Yeah, it has this great, that's another thing I was going to say, for 30 bucks on this little knife, you're getting this great blue anodized aluminum backspacer. Um, and to me, it just, like you said, it, it just adds a little splash of fun, color. It's always nice to have a little bit of color on a knife too, because it, it takes away from the threat of something silvery and sharp and black, you mm. know, black mm. and silver. Yeah. Throw some blue in there. It's like, okay, it's a little tool. I like, I like the look of it. Yeah. I've, I've got uh, one CRKT, the executive that our buddy Stu uh, sent along uh, to, uh, to me. So, uh, so again, thanks to Stu for that. That uh, CRKT Pete uh, might be one that uh, I might be looking to get. Cause again, like you said, you know, Thirty dollars. That that's kind of my price range, as opposed to the three hundred dollar price range. <laughs> exactly. And if we're being realistic, and if we're not talking as collectors, this this is a great great thing. This yeah. you know they talk about making knives to last for generations, and mm-hmm. and I, I I get it, and uh, and I respect that idea. Uh, you know, from from higher end and custom makers, but you know this FRN is not is going nowhere. This is going to be around longer than humanity, no right. doubt. Right. Uh, so you could pass this one down the generations if this is what you can get, you know, right. if this is what you have. It looks like a nice usable knife. Yeah, yeah. And light. And the funny thing is, is uh, uh, this will be, uh, after I do the review, this will be going into my wife's rotation. It's yeah. still my knife, but it will be going into my <laughs> wife's rotation because she loves it so much. You made that very clear, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the reason I mentioned my wife... Uh, is a petite woman and she does have small hands and this really, uh, really just, works for her. That's good. Yeah. Yep. All right. Great. Well, that, uh, definitely looks like a, a good looking knife. Sounds like a great, uh, looking knife. So, uh, definitely, uh, five knife, four knives. What's, what's the, uh, the, uh, for the knife junkie, the rating scale, how many, oh, kni- oh, how oh. many <laughs> knives out of five does it get? Oh, well for its price range, I would give it, I would give it five. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, for its price range, given, I mean, given the attention to detail and then, oh, by the way, super sharp. I was opening up, uh, we got a whole bunch of uh, window treatments uh, and and I was hanging them and opening up, you know, those those plastic ties that they put around oh, boxes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I had two knives with me. I had my mini CQC7, which has, which has a fat blade. It comes down to a very sharp chisel, but still. And I, I had the peat and the peat just sailed through those things nice. like with, with no struggle at all. I didn't have to put any torque or anything into it. Just whoosh. nice. The seven, seven liked to argue a little bit. So. Oh, okay. Well, my, uh, my very short list of knives to, that I may want to buy, I think the peat is on it. So, uh, excellent. excellent. Yeah. So good review. Thanks, Bob. My pleasure. All right. Got to get to it, man. Collector's remorse. Are you are you having collector's remorse? The reason you wanted to talk about it? You know, um, sometimes. Well, today, uh, I got up early and I, I was in my, I was in my uh, my den, my man, my man room. You know, where I have my knives and my computer and my tools and my stuff. And uh, I was just looking around, and I, and every single surface is covered with knives, and including the walls. And listeners are going, yeah, and what's the point? What's so wrong about that? <laughs> and I was like, it, and and some of them I, I I leave out because I have every intention to sell them this or, this or that. Uh, but really, I, I, I was like, this is a lot. I'm looking around. This is a lot. And I, and I started to think about the nature of of collecting. And, and I know this comes up and I, I, I bring this up time, you know, every once in a while. It's, it's this thought of, you know. I, I slip into the curator role. I have to have um, examples of all different kinds of knives or or at least the ones I'm interested in. And I, I'm i still in an acquisitive stage. I think what it is, Jim, is a midlife crisis. I'm, I, I'm, I'm starting to look at the acquisitive uh, nature of my youth and my uh, younger adulthood and then my 
30s and then my 40s. <laughs> and I'm starting to say, well, maybe the second part of life, because I intend to live quite a long time, maybe the second part of life is about, you know, maybe not acquiring so much. Maybe it's more about uh, 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 worrying about other things. <laughs> And it may, you know, so these are all early morning thoughts, Jim. I'm, I'm right. not, I'm not trying to say I'm, 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 I'm out of the knife game. You're, you're not regretting I'm, I'm anything yet. Than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I was, I was reflecting on like every time I get a new knife, the thrill is shorter, uh, between getting that and then getting a new one or looking for a new one or getting a deal on a new one from someone who has one. And then I thought, you know, I am very lucky that Blade Banter introduced me to the pass around group that uh, a lot of the big YouTubers are a part of. And they have an opportunity to get on the list to receive, you know, one of 20 knives at a time or whatever. I mean, you, you're receiving one or two knives at a time, but mm. um, but you can choose from a, 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 a selection and check them out. These are new knives that are new to market. And you have an opportunity to uh, live with them for a week or week and a half and and do a review on them and really figure out whether it's something you can recommend to your viewers but also uh, whether it's something you want to lay down your money for and uh that opportunity has has felt like a little bit of freedom to me jim because because now i i can start to i can have knives moving through the man cave without them having to stop here and take up permanent space in the old craftsman tool chest where i keep my knives, you know, mm -hmm. and then maybe I can take an honest look at uh, at what I have and and start paring down. I know, I know, you keep saying that, Bob. You keep saying that, and to me, <laughs> it reminds me of the old Jane's Addiction song. She's gonna kick tomorrow, you know. It's like tomorrow, I'll quit tomorrow. I'm, not, you know, today, psh, it's it's already guy. I already received a knife today, but tomorrow, no right. new knives. And uh, thinking like that, I'm like this these. This kind of has all the hallmarks of an addiction here. If I if I let myself go there, so so well, you uh, got to remember, you are the knife oh junkie. God, exactly. <laughs> it's right in my name. Yeah, but uh, that getting, was always, getting your fix. <laughs> that was always kind of a tongue in cheek, and now it's starting to feel less and less so. So, so I was just uh, thinking this morning about this, and so I I typed into YouTube collector's remorse, and mm. and a video came up. And it's a uh, people in the comic book or uh, those collect collectible comic book miniatures like that. That is a huge area of collecting. Uh, mm -hmm. You might know uh, uh, this YouTube channel, but they sat down and had a discussion of recent purchases that they made that they sort of made impulsively because it's this uh, it's Voltron and I collect Voltron and it's right. produced by so and so. And it sounded just like the knife thing. Oh, it's in 20 CV. I have four paramilitaries, but this one's in 20 CV and it has the brown handle in it. So I have right. to, uh, to compare it to the nine, you know. And so you make all these excuses and you get it. And then so this was a very funny uh, video. And to me, it it really uh, it just really showed that this is a uh, this goes across a wide swath of culture. It's that collector sure. collector mentality. And yeah. And maybe if you're aware of it, you can stave off some disappointment, you know? Well, I think if you're aware of it, you know, is, isn't that the uh, first step toward uh, conquering your addiction or whatever? You know, just being aware of it and, uh, you know, not using the just – not trying to justify it, but being aware that uh, you're trying to justify it or whatever, you know. Huh. Yes. Well, you bring up justification and that's that's the trick because a lot of the time – you know, justification. Oh yeah, I can justify hurt. anything. Yeah, I can justify anything. Yeah, <laughs> and and so the the thing is making sure you're not justifying uh, blowing the family budget on exactly. a new eighty twenty. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. As as long as your uh, your knife collecting or any kind of collecting or hobby is not uh, uh, affecting your health or affecting your you and your family's financial uh, uh, future, yeah, enjoy yourself. Yeah, I always. Uh, justified my certain collections over the time as, well, you know, when my daughter gets ready for college, I can always sell this and help pay for college. So right. <laughs> right. That was my ultimate justification. So just look around, you see all the knives and think about your daughter's futures. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, my justification is like, it used to be post-apocalyptic trading. Well, at least I have a lot of knives to trade. You That's know? right. Uh, so 
don't let your possessions possess you. I know that's a, a corny old trope, but it, it can be true. And, and, and just as I wrap this bit of the conversation, it's funny that I, everything is scalable. I was just listening uh, recently to the, to Elon Musk on Joe Rogan. He was talking about selling his houses. He's like, I was collecting houses for a houses. while. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, so, you know, at least I don't have to try and sell a whole bunch of houses. Then again, right. I'm sure he's, he's got a team of realtors who can take right. care of that for him. Well, he's got to put his money somewhere. So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, if you've uh, got collector's remorse, experienced collector's remorse, or have any thoughts about it, we'd definitely love to uh, hear from you. Give us your opinion. Give us your thoughts. Call the listener line and and leave us a message, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. Give us your thoughts about collector's remorse. Uh, Again, if you've had it, what you've done about it, or if you just think Bob's full of... uh, BS. And there's no such thing as collector's remorse when we're talking knives. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. First world problems, right? Right. Before that morning cup of coffee. So (laughs) quit quit getting up early and don't think before you have coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Final uh, final thing here we want to mention, again, the Knife Junkie Town Hall coming up. It's going to be uh, shorter in length. We're not going to have a five-and-a-half-hour marathon, but maybe a couple of hours with uh, a handful of superstars in the knife world. And that's coming up on Saturday, June 20th at uh, noon Eastern Time. That's Eastern Standard Time. That's going to be on the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel that you can find at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Bob will... Uh, Again, release the uh, names, hopefully, of the guest tomorrow on Thursday, June 11th, if you happen to be listening to this podcast when it first comes out. And, uh, of course, we'll be talking about on the, the uh, podcast next week as well. But uh, looking forward to it, man. Looking yeah, forward to it. Too. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm also uh, – I'm, I'm very excited to have it uh, in a longer f- format for each guest, you know, yeah, to, yeah. to have a – a little more time to sink our teeth in. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, I, I just want to mention uh, my last thought for the day is um, Thursday Night Knives is a great opportunity to meet me and to meet other people. Uh, I always have a co-host or quite quite usually have a co-host. And uh, it's a really opportunity, a great opportunity if you're interested in, in kind of joining the conversation. You know, I can't, um, you know, we have an interview podcast. We have this podcast. And then Thursday Night Knives is is sort of the the gathering place where we can all get on and talk. If you have a smartphone, you have a uh, a, a laptop or a or an iPad, you can get on and uh, you know just come on for two minutes. Show me the new knife you got. Yeah. We'll talk for a minute and and then you can dip. And it's a it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to meet uh, meet you all. So yeah, consider coming on sometime. Yeah, great uh, great chance to. Uh, uh, meet folks in the knife community that you've uh, seen and heard or just getting to know. So uh, Thursday Night Knives, again, every Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. If you want to subscribe to his YouTube channel, thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe. And if for some reason or not you're not subscribed to the podcast or Bob's semi-regular. Madness. Yes. What am I talking about? Or a newsletter, uh, go to thenifejunkie.com slash subscribe. Bob, that was a great little laugh you had there about the newsletter. <laughs> Sorry, I liked your little semi-regular, semi-regular <laughs> almost never regular newsletter. Come on, folks. You got to guilt them into sending you a newsletter. <laughs> knifejunkie.com slash subscribe. Knifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe. All right, buddy. Good show today. Thanks for, uh, thanks for everything. We look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, for Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim the Knife Newbie Person saying thanks for joining us on episode number 119 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.